So this isn't going to be a creepy video, not at all. We're actually in the shower trying to test out the Aquaria FP2 MM Wave motion sensor. We're going to see if it stays triggered in the shower through the glass and, you know, keeps the light bulb on when you're taking a shower. And sorry, I don't have some heft size shower, but the light bulb stays on all through the shower. The sensor is right there and it does keep the light bulb on all throughout the shower you know so you don't take a shower in the dark even though i do like doing that sometimes especially when it's 5 a.m side note dimmable bulbs in the shower set it super warm are awesome at 5 a.m where you can hardly see your hand in front of your face so this is that aquaria oh, i'm probably screwing the name up always but hey, it just sounds like aquarium to me. It's kind of the same. So we're just going to call it aquarium. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of people saying, no, pronounce it like this. Hey, that's great. Maybe I'll learn the correct way to pronounce some of these names. So the sensor is an MM wave. Basically what that is, it's going to be like kind of like a radar sensing. It's supposed to detect movement and even minute movements of just say someone breathing. So it's, you know, gonna solve that issue of, you know, you want the lights on whenever you're in the room, but yet you're laying on the couch being a lazy ass and watching TV, right? And then the lights go off. Well, this is supposed to solve that, and in most cases it does. But the big issue I have with it, and I know you've been around Aquaria and whatnot, and Jami and whatnot, they're all those little brands. They majority of their stuff's been Zigbee. And Zigbee's great. It's local. You can bring it straight into Home Assistant, Zigbee 2 MQTT, etc. But this is gonna be Wi-Fi. Yeah, so it does work with, if you actually see here on the box, it does work with HomeKit. And it just says Apple on theirs, right? But they need a Home Assistant logo I think, over here, I believe. They do have the Apple HomeKit. You don't need any Apple devices, as I don't have any Apple devices in the house. And the HomeKit integration pops straight into, pulls in the Lux sensor, which shows how much lighting is in the room, also brings in that present sensor. Now... Where things get a little weird with this is the way it mounts. So they do have these little mounts in the box, these little metal pieces. Yeah, it sticks to the magnet on the bottom here. Now, they really want you to take and put this up from what I can see where you got the wall up in the room, and then you want this to be pivoted down, kind of cover the room and get all the presence and motion goodness, you know, pick everything up. So they do have this USB-C cord pops in the bottom here, as you can see there. So it kind of stays flat, but then I guess when you have this up, you have this wire dangling, you gotta figure out something to do with that. So keep that in mind. If you had that in the room, you gotta figure out what to do. And you know, they do give you this long cord and where do you plug this in at? And it's just USB-A on the other side. You know, different chargers. I don't think it comes with a charger. They're kind of doing the whole Samsung Apple thing and everybody else that got away from doing all the various chargers. So the only problem is when you go to mount this on say a bookshelf and I find it easier for the bookshelves, you know, because you, you can probably hide the wire around. So you may want to put this on the bookshelf and that would be, you know, that would be the flat part here and you shoot out across the room. But then the cord comes in here and it comes out the bottom. And then how do you go to the side or whatever? Uh, it's just difficult to do. I wish they would have had like a pivoting USB-C on this somehow instead of this way. So that does make it awkward the way it has to mount. So now the cool thing about this is I did take it apart. There are four screws on the bottom there. So you don't have to take yours apart. It is an ESP32 in there. Whoa, whoa ESP32, wow. Yes, ESP32, I didn't dig majorly into the firmware, but this model I do have, I did solder to it, and the firmware was not locked. The bootloader was not locked. The no e-fuses were burnt. So it does have an 8 meg ESP32 chip on it. You could flash your own firmware and do your own thing, but you would need to reverse engineer the radar array sensor in the front and look at the communication. So if you do go down that route, 
definitely you know back up the firmware multiple times and verify it's a good backup and that way you can start to reverse engineer if you want to dig off into that it'd be pretty cool to see if what some other people can come up with maybe doing some esp home stuff out of this but it's probably going to be pretty advanced with it so i'll you know we'll, we'll hold out for that i'll shoot some comments down below if we hear something else around that people are doing custom firmware because yeah you do need to put this in the cloud to make it work you have to use their aquaria app and you have to set up all the little different maps and the interference things and all that which is very cool that they have that different stuff. You can map someone around the room and kind of gimmicky set up a couch and see where they're sitting at. But that's all going to be in their app and not going to be at this time, not like in some sort of car and home assistant. Um, maybe in the future it might have some sort of API thing with it. But I didn't see anything at this time that they were product just released. Now, I do wish that they would have... Since it is ESP32, the libraries are there. They may already be using it. Why don't they put a feature in here where it can just go put in a local MQTT server? That way it would have the communication straight. It would be super quick because I did run into an issue where sometimes the HomeKit stuff would get delayed and sometimes it was up to like 20 seconds and that just plain sucks for doing trying to pull off motion on this. And I would restart things and sometimes it'd get better and sometimes it wouldn't. And my home assistant machine is pretty damn quick. I don't have this issue with any other Wi-Fi based devices in my home. Everything is stupid quick. And that's the majority of my stuff I do use is Wi-Fi based off of Tasmoda or ESP home. So I'm very familiar with making products like this work quickly in the home. And I couldn't really make this one work that fast at times. So not sure what the delay was there. Just wish they would do a simple MQTT server for that. So one thing I was impressed with was the ability to turn on a ceiling fan and set the interference zones and block out the ceiling fans. But then sometimes that caused some delays and then sometimes it wouldn't pick up my son. I think he's like 65, 70 pounds. And he would be sitting there, you know, moving around or whatnot. And he would say that no one is in the room. So that can be an issue. You do have to do a lot of testing and playing around with and where you can mount this thing before you make it permanent. So would I buy one? It is an $80 sensor. Uh, hopefully they'll come to their senses and bring that down a good bit because they're around $80 at launch at least. Um, maybe there were some other, there's some other discounts out there, but it's not a $50 sensor, I'll tell you that. Um, I, I, I could find some other MM way that I can build ESP chips and I can do that for like $10 and I can hide them and put them in different boxes in the ceiling and whatnot and do it with ease. That's probably my route I'm going to go. But if you don't want to do the whole DIY thing, fully understand that and you want to just take some out the box and rock and roll, well, and you have $80 or whatever they may price may end up being, you know, down the road, then this might be the sensor for you. It's just not very useful for me at this point with the wiring and everything. And I'm trying to find a scenario where I could really use this where I could hide the wiring, but uh, that's very difficult. Normally I'm trying to put stuff inside the walls and whatnot and trying to find a USB I can stick in the wall is can be interesting as well. So I might as well not spend this money and go with just a little cheaper ESP chip, but then I have to hide it from the ceiling fans, which not too bad to do in the places I need to do that. So that'll about do it for this one. We're going to leave all the clips towards the end of this video, do it a little differently of the run through of the different scenarios I did and um, I don't know, tell me like what you think down below of um, maybe we got some other tests we could run with this thing. So for the testing, I just stuck the sensor up here. It does have a magnetic base. So, hey, what's not better than this metal candle thing? I can pivot around and it won't fall off and tear up during the testing. Cause yeah, we've had that issue with- uh... Yep, okay. Oh. Well, I'm glad that was the last test. Now what I did, I do have it tied in using HomeKit with Home Assistant, and then I have it toggling 
this bulb to red whenever there's presence, just so to get an idea of when I'm laying on the couch, watching TV, walking through the room, is it seeing the person and is it letting go of the presence, you know, just by looking at the red bulb there makes it simple. So one thing I'm seeing is it's saying absence and yet OG's on the couch. Stand up and let's see if we can set it off. Can you come over here? Oh, there it goes. It's showing the person now. But it's supposed to trigger when you're on the couch. I want to see what it would do with a smaller person, which he's not that small of a person. I think he's like 50-something inches. So, but it's not picking up. Come over here, like over here with me. See, we're not getting, oh, there we go. We finally got two people, right? See, now the weird part is he's sitting in the same exact spot and it's showing him sitting on the couch and it's showing presence. So I'm not exactly sure what has changed or how he was able to sit super still and fool the sensor before. It should see me enter the frame once I walk in. And there we are. And if I sit on the couch, let's see if it puts me next to him. Yep, for the most part. So, got the ceiling fan on. Of course, the sensor is right here. And I noticed something weird. Like, it'll show like, where I'm at right now. And you can see it is seeing me. And I move to the side sometimes. But then when I leave the room, there it goes, it updated. I leave the room where it can't even see me. It sometimes will get hung up and leave the person in the room. Let's see if I go the other way. Now it shows two people. There's only one person in the room. I'm behind the sensor. And it'll show this other person will hang up. Well, make a liar out of me. I've noticed sometimes it'll hang up and show that person there. If I walk around the other way, it'll just pop up over here. So I think the fans, it still messes with it a lot. So it's not really that great at kicking out all of the interference it just does it sometimes so we still have the big issue of ceiling fans that i find it's not too bad on the reaction time let's do it one more time and yeah, see sometimes i get that delay which by the time you've went that far across the room then you really want the lights to be on so this is a test I wanted to see when we go in the bathroom and based on the motion sensors, which one's going to win? That's actually pretty decent. The red light came on before the light and that's a Zigbee motion sensor and then the Aquaria one right on top of it. I'm assuming it's due to the Aquaria one. It can see further down than that Zigbee one can. So one more try, we'll walk in the bathroom, see which one beats it. Eh, they're about the same. So, eh, just gonna hit or miss based on what it is. So not too bad on some locations, you just gotta be mindful of where you're gonna be installing this. How you doing? Just like that? Whoa! Yeah. How about over there to the right, to the side? No!
Huh? Why are you walking backwards? Ha, ha, ha.